everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. I have a 10 minute watercolor painting video for you, but before I get into that, I did want to mention my website, coreyfrankcreates.com. If you go visit, uh, you can see all the different things I offer as an artist, in particular, my art shop on Redbubble. There is a variety of my watercolor paintings that you can get printed on a bunch of different products like phone cases, tote bags, and even more traditional things like actual art prints. So I'd love if you check that out. And then second, on at the bottom of any page on my website, you can sign up for my email newsletter. I send it once a week. Uh, once you sign up, you should get a confirmation email in your inbox. You may need to check your junk or spam folder in case it goes there. Once you click the confirmation link, you will get access to my Graphite Basics course for free. So that's just a couple of things I offer. Again, Corey Frank creates.com. I love it if you go and visit. So for today's video, I haven't done a 10 minute watercolor painting in a while. This one is of a blue jay and the whole point of this series is just to get paint to paper and finish a painting in a relatively short amount of time. You're not necessarily going to be producing uh, some fabulous masterpiece, but it does help you to get practicing and painting um, for little bits of time every day or however frequently you can. So uh, feel free to follow along as I share some tips and a bit about my process, uh, but otherwise if you just want to sit back and watch, uh, I hope you enjoy. As you can see, there is no sketch on this paper, it's just a blank piece of watercolor paper. And that's the way I do all of my 10 minute watercolor paintings. It's really not about the accuracy. It's just about uh, the movement and the motion of painting and trying to do it more frequently. So when I want something to look more accurate and be more of a finished painting, like a, a final piece that I would either sell or, or want to frame and hang up and display, I do an under sketch to make sure the proportions are very accurate. But with these 10 minute paintings, it's really um, more quick, um, down and dirty, so to speak. So I am using a, this one is, looks quite large, it's a size one. So this brand, Flytum Art of paint brushes, at least with this particular set of round brushes, run very large. So most size one paint brushes that are a round paintbrush are gonna be much tinier than this, much thinner, not have as many bristles. This one tends to run large, so it's more like a size four, maybe even a size six, depending on the brand of a round brush. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, but um, for this particular one, it does run a little large. And you can tell it comes to a really nice fine point because I'm able to get some decent detail here. If you can't tell, and because um, it's very early stages, this is the eye of the blue jay. So uh, I have the highlight kind of at the top of the eye and then down at the bottom, a little bit of reflective light um, that I'll fill in a little bit so it won't be a pure white. Uh, but taking some time to try and get that looking somewhat realistic. So then the rest of the painting, if it is not as detailed, that's gonna be okay, but um, with these quicker paintings, you maybe have one or two areas that have a bit more detail, and then the rest is gonna be maybe a little more abstract or looser brush strokes, um, thinner paint and things like that. So here I have the really thick black paint that I'm using and uh, taking the time to fill in the details. And again, the kind of ring of skin around the eye is fairly detailed and see how fine of a tip that brush comes to. You want to try and use a brush. I think they call them round brushes. I used to call them round tip because I just felt like it was appropriate because it comes to a tip, <laughs> a nice fine point. But anyhow, you want to use some kind of brush that comes to a fine point, you could even use a slanted flat brush because the higher end of the slanted bristles comes to a decently fine point. Uh, so you could use that as well. Uh, but for now, I'm starting to go around and give the skin of the eye. And uh, by the way, if you want to see what the original reference image looks like, because I do work from a photograph to try and make 
the piece look at least a little uh, representational of a real animal. Uh, but that's linked in the description. The image is from, uh, sorry, unsplash.com, which has copyright free images by really wonderful photographers on there. So it's linked in the description. You can go see the original image and what that looks like. So now I'm starting to get into the feathers. So there's kind of this thin strip of feathers leading from the corner of the eye back into uh, some of these dark feathers. There's kind of a line and a strip, just the coloring of the blue jay. It kind of uh, tr transitions between black feathers, blue feathers, and some grayish white feathers. So right here, I'm working on these really dark black feathers. And so I have fairly thick paint on the brush and not a ton of water. The more water you have versus paint, it's gonna be a very uh, thin paint, uh, which kind of goes everywhere. Whereas when you have less water in your brush and thick paint, it is going to look much darker. It's not, it's gonna be more opaque. So the page, the paper underneath won't shine through as much. So that is what you want is to have kind of these really dark areas that contrast with the lighter washes. And again, using that tip to create a little bit of a feathery texture, these kind of thin lines happening at the edges of the feathers. So you can add some kind of appearance of texture with the tip of your brush or sometimes even the whole brush. After all, your brush itself is made of small individual bristles, almost like hair or feathers. So if you get it fairly dry instead of really wet, um, your bristles may kind of fan out a bit and you can create textures that way. Okay, so this is a manganese blue and you can see it's a very kind of sky blue type color. Again, I'm not mixing up colors. Uh, this doesn't, this color doesn't match exactly the coloring in the photograph. But again, when you're working a little quicker, um, it's okay to kind of just choose approximate colors. Whereas if you're doing a, a longer and more accurate one or one that you wanna look a little more photorealistic, then you're gonna maybe wanna pre-mix some colors ahead of time. Uh, Cause it's, it's gonna be rare that the color just straight from the tube or straight in your palette is going to be the exact match for color in the photographic image. So just a note on that. Um, but yeah, so I used manganese blue, also a little bit of the cobalt blue. Um, so on my palette, uh, the, on the right side, you see several different blues. So there's um, white and then an empty one, and then you see black, and then there's the cobalt blue, and underneath cobalt blue is manganese blue, and then underneath the manganese blue is ultramarine blue, which is the darkest blue. starting to get into the beak and drawing the line and again some of the shape gets a little off here because I was working fairly quickly and and not being exact with kind of the shape and length of the beak but by the end you can definitely tell this is a bird's face <laughs> so starting to maybe look a little recognizable and there's a contrast between the upper portion of the beak, which is uh, has some highlighting in it versus the underside of the beak is much darker. It's in shadow and it could just be the color of the beak is a little lighter on the top, but a lot of that has to do with light where it's hitting, the reflection of the light and all of those lovely details. So um, a big part of making something look realistic is contrast between light and dark. So just making sure that you have that. So with the beak, you wouldn't wanna just paint it all the same dark black. You want to have that lighter uh, bit of black. So it's almost a gray. It's a little more watered down paint on the top and then the darker portion of the beak underneath because it's in shadow. And then little lines of gray to suggest the feathers underneath and now I'm just putting a shadow that's very watered down Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is a really dark blue. It's almost a cross between like a navy and a gray. So that's a really nice way to get shadow without using pure black. Again I'm using the manganese blue again for this just to block in the shape of the bird so we have a little bit of blue um, right at the base of the neck of the bird. And then um, if you make a mistake, you can kind of like I just did, um, I realized the shape wasn't quite how I wanted. So I just quickly wet, cleaned my brush, wet it, ran the wet 
a brush over the paint I had laid down and then took a dry cloth and blotted it up. So that is almost like a racing watercolor color or at least trying to lift it off the paper so you can go, go back and repaint. And my time was quickly running out. I realized I had only a couple minutes left at this point. So I just kind of quickly blocked in a little more paint wasn't intending on doing the full body of the bird because I knew I probably wouldn't have enough time for that. So I at least had kind of the main face and a little like portions, hints of the shoulders and, and a little bit of kind of feathering on the belly, just a tiny bit. Um, and here realizing that I wanted to slightly reshape the beak <laughs> just to get it a little more accurate to the photo. So again, you take a clean, damp brush run it over the paint you want to lift and then you take your dry clean damp cloth and blot it up and it, it almost acts like erasing the watercolor a little bit so i slightly reshaped the beak and then wanted to make sure i added a signature uh, and realizing that i had a few more seconds after i had added the signature just to make the piece look a little more complete or at least to fill the page a little more I went ahead and added uh, some of the fun uh, sort of abstract splashes of color. So I put quite a bit of paint and, and dip it in the water on the brush and then I tap it and it creates this fun little splatter and then adding a little more uh, kind of just washes of color here and there just to fill out the idea and the shape of the bird. So that was with the manganese blue. Now I'm using ultramarine blue. And that's also, by the way, I use the ultramarine blue for the signature. And that's the final piece. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. Until my next video, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. God bless, and I'll see you soon.